all-star starter, Shea Gilgis Alexander. They are top five in offensive defensive efficiency. Shea Gilgis Alexander is a player you're going to need to start paying attention to. This is a team you need to start paying attention to. I think we're going to be a, a really good team. And the Thunder with the big comeback here in Denver to take down the defending champs. Uh, a lot sooner than people do. It was the best of rebuilds. It was the worst of rebuilds. It was the age of draft picks. It was the age of losing streaks. Nine straight losses to Bella as time runs out. And Atlanta wins the ball game. The Atlanta Hawks did not have Trey Young. If they get to the week and a half from now, and the losing streak gets to like 16, 15, if like if that starts happening, yeah, something has to Get ready for the ultimate experience. You haven't seen a video like this one. May I present to you two franchises, two rebuilds. First, Oklahoma City, where the history is a bit murky. And the Supersonics win their first ever NBA championship. Let the celebration begin in Seattle. It is over. There is something about winning a championship that makes everybody feel like they've had a little part to play in it. Here comes Sam Shulman with the trophy. Here's Lenny Wilkins with him as they come off the plane. And then there were 250,000 people in downtown Seattle for the parade. It was a complete representation of who we are as a city. Despite that, the Sonics couldn't win and the team falls apart. Sean Kemp gets traded. The owner has a dispute with Gary Payton. Why buy the team if you're going to let it move? Are you sorry you let them slip away and you sold them? I regret it. I uh, naively thought that uh, the people who bought the team would keep it here. That didn't happen. I bet he feel bad inside. He should. He feel like You know what I'm saying? Because he is a piece of Schultz sold that team to Oklahoma City like that. He could care less about human interaction. A lot went down, and we'll get back to that. Now, Steve Smith, who was with the Portland Trailblazers when they faced the Lakers in the 2000 playoffs, got traded to the San Antonio Spurs, and he recounts meeting a young employee by the name of Sam Presto, who he says he was always around. If you were new to the organization, you really didn't know his title. He continued by saying he'd be in the video room, he'd be around the coaches, with the players, with the general manager. But the biggest thing that stood out was his eye for talent. You see, enter a 19-year-old Frenchman by the name of Tony Parker. He goes and works out for the Spurs during draft week. First tried out for the Spurs, there was that story, your first ever workout with the Spurs. Yeah, it was terrible. My first workout was terrible. Pop didn't want to see me anymore. He was like, nah, he's terrible. I don't want to see him anymore. So thank God to R.C. Buford and uh, Sam Presti forcing Pop to, to do a second workout. And as we all know, he was drafted after that. And the rest is pretty much history. Sammy's a pain in the ass. He's brilliant. He's fantastic, which I knew from day one long ago. This also addressed the lack of point guard play the Spurs had at the time and Parker making big impact into his second year where the team ended up winning a championship. NBA champion. And this is where we get to our second team, the Detroit Pistons who won the championship the next year. It was an upset, the upset of all upsets against a juggernaut of a team. Detroit Pistons have just shocked the Los Angeles Lakers. If sports betting was around, I wouldn't think anyone would bet on the Pistons. All of you who had Detroit in five, no you didn't. We also thought the Pistons had no chance. No chance whatsoever. People in Detroit have been screaming for a couple of weeks that nobody's paying attention to the Pistons. And all the stories are framed around the Lakers. Well, they are going to hate this story then, because the reasonable follow-up on this series isn't about what the Pistons are going to do now, it's about what's going to happen to the Lakers. Will Bond, will they lose Phil Jackson? Yes. Will they lose Kobe Bryant? Mm. Will they lose Paul Malone and Gary Payton? He's won. And will Shaq F out? I don't think Shaq will F out. And just like that, everybody else has moved on since. The Pistons are the basketball champions of the world! Artest punches that fan right in the face. Soon after, months later, the Battles at the Palace incident happens, which forever changed the trajectory of the NBA. 
2005, the Pistons lose in the finals in seven, and they would never reach the finals after that. 48 points for LeBron James. He scored 29 of the last 30. But it's another year that they're one of the NBA's best, but will fall short of their goals. Many say in 2008, Joe Dumars completed the worst trade in Pistons history, trading cornerstone finals MVP Chauncey Billups and more for Allen Iverson. The Pistons that season ended up being an eighth seed, getting swept in the first round by the same Cavs team that they almost beat two years prior in the conference finals. All the while, cornerstone point guard Chauncey Billups helped lead his team to the conference finals in 09 against the eventual championship Lakers team led by Kobe Bryant. Yep, that trade ended up destroying the Pistons. Oh boy. Okay, so to quickly recap, after losing to the Bulls in 96, just Supersonic signed Jay McAvaney to bolster the roster, but all that did was alienate Sean Kemp who would get traded the following season. Years later, when the Supersonics were being sold, Howard Schultz came in and bought the team in 2001, and things did not go too well as he thought he could operate the NBA team like he did his Starbucks chains. When Gary Payne was protesting for more pay and basically skipped out of training camp, they were both going at it, both feeling like they were being disrespected, and yeah, things just did not go well. Gary Payton and Ray Allen are switching teams. So the Sean Kemp and Gary Payton era ended soon after, and Ray Allen was now the fix that was needed to bolster the Supersonics forward. But the arena that they played in was pretty small, and the NBA was obviously wanting them to upgrade. So Schultz asked the legislature for more money, and they returned back to him up. But unfortunately, he would have to sell the team only five years into his tenure as owner. And that's when the Supersonics really came to an end. Oh boy. Because it's draft night in New York, and a dominant big man is set to make his official entry into the NBA. So too, a smooth super scorer after a year in Texas. So in 2007, the draft lottery happens. And at this point, the Supersonics will get lucky getting the second pick of this year's draft. and. It seemed like the second pick was already in at this point. I think that Seattle's going to get a player that is going to be a big, big time scorer for a lot of years in the future. So now that Schultz didn't own the team, it was under a new ownership, Clay Bennett from Oklahoma. And at this point, he had a past relationship with the Spurs, so that's where he hired Sam Presti to replace Lenny Wilkins, who won a championship as the coach of the Supersonics in 79. And at this point, the Supersonics would enter a new era where Sam Presti would make his first move. Seattle will send Ray Allen. No! Oh, what? The Supersonics have traded Ray Allen. What happened? And the Celtics will select Jeff Green of Georgetown at number five for Seattle, assuming he is there at number five. Jeff Green, my teammate, man. I've been traded already in the NBA. First day. I've been trading to Seattle with the man over there, that, man, that young man right there, Mr. Kevin Durant. So I'm excited. It's going to be fun. And I can't wait. As I said previously, it was a foregone conclusion who the Supersonic would select at number two. A scoring savant. He can do it all. We really hadn't seen a player like Kevin Durant, so of course he didn't go number one. But he was still a great prospect. And Sam Presti now hiring a new coach. One uh, mission accomplished, sure. getting a new head coach, P.J. Carlos. One of the former Spurs assistant coaches during the championship run. Interesting. Now, after trading Ray Allen, Sam Presti was again on the move, trading sharpshooter Richard Lewis in a signing trade for a $9.5 million trade exception with the Orlando Magic. And at this point, with that trade exception money, he went on to pay Kurt Thomas, who the Suns were trying to dump, and Presti also managed to nab two first round picks, one being in 2008, the other one in 2010. Now this rookie season for Kevin Durant would be a rocky one as it would be the last season played in Seattle for the Supersonics and of course the fans weren't too pleased to see that. Almost every home game was an emotional one, especially the last game that was played against the Mavericks with the fans serenading the team. The fans did all they could do to keep basketball relevant in Seattle, but unfortunately, the team would have to go to Oklahoma. In short, the guy who runs Starbucks sold the Sonics to some guys who aren't from here. 
And when they didn't get a new gym with restaurants and Wi-Fi and all that other fancy stuff new gyms come with, they left. It's unfortunate, but things had to be done. And the Seattle Supersonics will obviously have a team at some point in the future. But this story will now move away from Seattle and into another city. And obviously, the Supersonic fans in Seattle are not too pleased about that. But in the 2008 lottery, they get the fourth pick, and they would do good with that pick. He says if Russell Westbrook is not a natural point guard, what are you going to do in certain situations with Kevin Durant? Jay Ballas had Westbrook at number 10 in this year's mock draft, and it's interesting him jumping up so high for OKC. Now, with this late first-round pick from 2008 that they got from Phoenix, Serge Ibaka will be selected at number 24. Yes. Serge Ibaka. Keep that name in mind. Now, Oklahoma, their team gets introduced as the Oklahoma City Thunder. They were a historically bad team to start off. They lost 29 of their first 32 games out of the gate. Another bad season in 2009, another high lottery pick. Thunder just won the number three pick in the draft a couple of minutes ago. And this will be their first draft pick as the Oklahoma City Thunder now. And they would select Arizona shooting guard James Harden and this would be an interesting pick at number three so now you have a trio of Kevin Durant Westbrook and Harden being assembled in less than three years time by Sam Presti and the rebuild was thus basically complete at this point nobody in the world thought the OKC Thunder would win 50 games so just to illustrate the progress the Thunder made around this time Sam Presti took over and they were losing obviously and when the rebuild kicked in to where they got KD Look at how well they started doing after 2009 and 10. Oh they have several players. In fact, 10 of them, 24 or under. Katie's 22. It boggles the brain. Westbrook is 21. Harden, 21. Now the Thunder had to face some tough teams in the playoffs. Obviously, being a good team in the regular season is one thing, but being able to win in the playoffs is another. And that's where the Thunder would obviously meet their match in the Los Angeles Lakers in 2010. Lakers back on T, Harden with the three. For the tie. Having 50 wins in this competitive Western Conference would put you in the eighth seed, and uh, you would have to face the number one seed Lakers featuring Kobe Bryant. Thunder by three, their largest lead of the night. This is, like, this is a dog fight. Yeah, it's, 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 not, gonna, it's gonna be a long one? Yeah, it's, you're not gonna sit here. I'm not gonna sit here and say, you know, the series is gonna be over in five or six. So, you know, we gotta, we gotta fight, man. Good we got a serious fight on here. Kobe Bryant puts it in. What a tough shot from Kobe Bryant. Is this an opinion that you thought it would be a dog fight at the start? Or right did, from the start. Or the third quarter did it start? Right to be from a dog the start. Fight? We knew it was gonna be tough. Man. These kids ain't rolling over. They're here to play. They're here to win. Remaining won't use it. No fouls to give here. You got to double him. You cannot leave him one on one. Ryan for the lead. Misses. Gasol backs it in with five tenths of a second remaining. The Lakers just had counters for everything the Thunder threw at them. KD had a good game, but it didn't matter. Finds Westbrook, puts it up at the buzzer, off the rim, and the Lakers win and advance to the second round. I think it's clear the Thunder have arrived, but. Now they may have painted a target on their back. I think the biggest question for me now is, can you handle everybody coming to look for you? Last year you caught everybody by storm. No one thought you'd win 50 games, and you did. Now, KD, we're, you're getting double teamed every possession. Yeah. Can you handle that? And can the guys around you, KD, step their games up because now they have to? If you guys are wondering, I was on a break, so that's why y'all didn't see me up too much. But I'm back, and I hope you guys enjoy. Subscribe to the channel if you want to support. And also, I upload on the second channel too, so be better subscribe there too. Okay, back to the video now. So Allen Iverson, have to get used to that look, wearing the Piston jersey. The trade that may have ended the Pistons' success in the playoffs. Well, Allen Iverson may have saved them money, but they still got a lot of things to clean up here, as Allen Iverson would miss his first straight game at this point. Allen Iverson not playing for the third straight game because of a back issue. And looking ahead now, Iverson, when, if he comes back, he's coming off the bench. How well can he handle that role? Someone that's been a starter for his whole career now being told to come off the bench because the impact just isn't there with Allen Iverson this season. I, mean, I don't know where the first team all NBA. 
come off the bench while now. Clearly, he wasn't thrilled with this. And obviously, the Pistons would not win too many games. They would become the eighth seed. And as I said previously, get swept by the Cavs at 09. Yeah, this season was a disaster. Michael Curry is out as Pistons coach after the team finished under 500 and was eliminated in the first round of the NBA playoffs. Free agency comes around and the Pistons had to scramble to get players. Ben Gordon from the Chicago Bulls and Charlie Villanueva from the Milwaukee Bucks. Both teammates at one point in college and the Allen Iverson experience is ending in Detroit as he would sign with the Grizzlies in free agency. God chose Memphis as the place that I will continue my career. This may be the first time a player broke the news of a free agency signing on Twitter or as it's called now X. Everything fell apart in Detroit when Iverson said, look, I'd rather retire than uh, come off the bench. Well, his career average has not lined up with his recent season outings, and the Pistons would draft Greg Monroe, one of their many misses. The new Pistons coach doesn't like Rip Hamilton. The Pistons are now sold to a new ownership of billionaire Tom Gores, another miss in the draft, another miss in the coaching, and it would just keep going. A perpetual cycle of mediocrity would ensue in Pistons land. This fan finds out Tayshaun Prince got traded before the game. Joel Dumars, what are you doing? The Detroit Pistons have a new head coach, Maurice Cheeks. He's a player the Pistons have targeted for years. Josh Smith finally a Piston. We're a playoff team. They can't afford to find Smith's jump away short. 49, 50 games into his first season, and he's gone. Oh boy, Maurice Cheeks fired, but they also trade Brandon Knight Chris Middleton for Brandon Jennings. This was such a fleece. The Bucks won the trade by mile. Andre Drummond is now teamed up with Greg Monroe and Josh Smith. All non-shooters, but the goal here was to obviously reinvigorate the Pistons' defensive identity. And of course, to fix that, they also hired Stan Van Gundy as a full-time head coach. But not just that, folks. And the president of basketball operations for the Pistons as well. All right, now shifting gears back to 2011. Green traded to the Boston Celtics as the NBA trade deadline hit 2 p.m. It was clear after the Lakers series that the Thunder needed center depth. And so Sam Presti trading Jeff Green back to the Celtics team that originally had his draft rights for 6'10 center Kendrick Perkins. And of course, also trading Nasir Muhammad, but that's not important. Playoff time rolls around and the story of the NBA is this upstart Grizzlies team beating the Spurs, the number one seed, to make it to the second round for the first time. The Grizzlies, for the first time in franchise history, are in the second round of the NBA playoffs. This was the fourth time in NBA history an eighth seed had beat the NBA since the 16-team playoff format had begun. And now Zach Randolph and the Grizzlies would face off against the Thunder. Going into a timeout now, watch this. A little chippy. Zach Randolph, words for James Harden. The perfect series for an enforcer type like Kendrick Perkins to really get off. But also, this was a team in Oklahoma that was trying to get further in the playoffs and this game would be interesting. Missing the layup. Was Mayo coming right back. Here's Durant. Throws it away. Conley, Randolph, foul. The game was tied in overtime after this go-ahead. Gray with Vasquez three-pointer, wow. And Kevin Durant with a chance to win the game, and he misses. And they go to Zach Randolph, and tipped in by Gasol. Huge possession for the Thunder here. Westbrook comes through. Game is once again tied in the crucial seconds of double overtime. Okay, see again with a chance to win it. Final seconds. Here's Westbrook with a jumper short, and we go to the third overtime. The Thunder would finally regain their composure and take the commanding lead. Not as you possibly can. And Durant hitting the basket, and that may be the dagger. This series is now tied to a piece. Man, this would be an intense one for both the Thunder and the Grizzlies. You got to be locked in, you know, for this for this tough game six. We know that's going to be loud in there and going to be tough in a real hostile environment. We just got to go in there and, you know, play our game. Game five was a blowout. OKC routing them. The Grizzlies come back in game six and win. And uh, puts his head down, drives, puts it in. And the eight-seeded Grizzlies magical run will continue. A series like this going to seven. Quite intense in Oklahoma City nonetheless. Harden, bang, Kevin Durant. And they come up big with the win against the Grizzlies to end the series in seven games. First for the visitors, this young team, their oldest player in the starting lineup is 27. They have three starters under the age of 23. 
You compare that with the Dallas Mavericks. Their youngest player in the starting lineup is 28. This Dallas Mavericks team coming off a sweep against the Lakers team that defeated the Thunder in 6 in 2010. This series will be electric featuring one of the all-time greats, Dirk Nowitzki. How well they move the ball. They put so much pressure on the defense when you have willing, unselfish passes. And the vast array of chop making in game one by Dirk was just unbelievable. Left you speechless at some points in the game. When he gets the ball, I would come and double because you've got kids, Stevenson and Marion and Haywood. The Thunder struggled to guard this as they would keep fouling Dirk, where he would make history for most free throws made without him missing a single game. Puts it up, puts it in. 44 points for Dirk Nowitzki. This display of offensive brilliance was too much for the Thunder, who couldn't manage to stave off Dirk's 48 points on the playoff record 24 free throws made without a miss in the game. The game two was a different story though, OKC leading by as much as 10 points. For the Thunder tonight, Nowitzki right back with a three. Two misses right there, Nowitzki on his drive, nice fake. Puts it up, puts it in. Spinning on Collison, turning, falling away. Oh, he puts it in. Shot bait, the step through, the one-legged fade away. Dirk's fourth quarters would obviously be too much for the Thunder, and he would obviously be able to finish them off, not just with the shooting, but playmaking. And now still with a chance to go up three to one. Nowitzki on the drive. Collison fouled it. Nowitzki kicks it out in the corner. Kid fakes, fires a three. It's good. Jason Kidd. The Thunder now down 3-1. Dirk with his second game of over 40 points. This would be a tough one for the Thunder. They met their match. Derby Adam, you are definitely the MVP of this playoff. Wow. Obviously, Dirk was playing at an MVP level, an all-time great level, but they were still down four in game five to the Thunder. But the older, more experienced team just have what it takes to win games. Rebound gets knocked down. And they'll reset. Nowitzki again for the lead. Bang! The Mavs just had their number, and the series would end at five. Here the drive on the pull-up. Shot way off the mark. Collison, another offensive rebound, throws it up. Shot clock running down. Marion comes away with it. Marion in for the dunk, and he throws it down, and a foul. This would prove to be a massive learning experience for the Thunder, facing off against one of the toughest shot makers of all time in Dirk. They just couldn't contain him, and that ultimately cost the series as the Mavs just had more counters in them. And the Dallas Mavericks are going back to the NBA Finals. The center depth wasn't enough. The added playoff experience wasn't enough for the Thunder to pull through and make it to the Finals. They would have to try yet again the following season. I do not think he's a great fit for Oklahoma. He's not a one-on-one -on -one defender. And so what does that mean? Well, they need a shot blocker in Oklahoma because when they block shots and get out and run, you can't stop them. So the Thunder had to regroup for the following season. And in 2012, they would have added reinforcements with Serge Ibaka having a breakout year. But the playoffs, they would face the Mavs once again. Durant coming through the trash. Dishes to Ibaka, two hands, and a foul! Just recorded his first three blocks per game season. But the Mavericks were their opponent once again. KD had a game winner against them this season. From the top, against Marion. Durant, pull up jumper. Up the rim and in. Oh! A game winner of epic proportions. This playoffs would be exciting. The Thunder looking to outblast the Mavs this time around in this first round. Durant, and he's fouled. The Thunder having played in clutch moments multiple times. Up by Ibaka. Top shot. Bounces out. Even though the Thunder got better and the Mavs regressed, both teams were throwing haymakers, close games after close games. One team needed to break onto the seams, and that's what the Thunder just did. And for Oklahoma City, this is just another step in the process as Durant nails another three. And Harden, who had just won six man of the year, was special. Kick step jump shot, pretty play by Durant. Harden, the penetration and the give up inside. He's 25. Harden forcing the issue, the flow. Next dead ball, Harden swings it. Durant, he gets involved. 85, Mavericks, Westbrook on a kick out. Harden finds the open man. Durant, he's got him. Uh, clock is down to four. Harden the curl to the rim. Oh! The front, shot clock is down to four. Harden, the drive. Harden to the hoop. Oh, he's got it! James Harden is smoking hot. In the opening round of the 2012 playoffs, 
Dallas goes down. Now they have to face another team that they lost to previously. They blew them out in game one, but Kobe Bryant had some things to say in game two. Oh no. Kobe, good screen by Gasol. Pick and roll. Into Bynum. It's Bynum trying to close his way into Perkins. It was the Lakers game to win, and the Thunder would have to be clutch here. And they were clutch. Head of the Thunder. Here comes the crossover move by Harden. It's Kobe Bryant. All in the steal. Picked off by Durant. Here's Kobe against Harden. Shot clock at four. That was the fucking great defense by Harden who comes racing the other way. Into Blake. Into the hole. In a world piece. Bryant sits the shoot. Rebound chased and retrieved by West. It's Durant, switch on defense for the lead. Having come back down seven less than two minutes to go, it wasn't over yet. Blake, a three, no, recovered by Cephalosha. And now the Thunder take a commanding 2-0 lead in the series when it was looking like they were going to lose this game too. Kobe Bryant now having to go back home and try to salvage this series. And then we got Shippy. Study how to play intensely, but boy. Count it and a foul. Ryan and Fisher. Tough shot. Kobe Bryant's tough shot making was really the impetus of this game free. Kobe Bryant again. Bryant to drive. Lays it up and backs it in. And despite all this, the Thunder was still within reach. Kevin Durant to go for the tie. Fires a three, in and out. Ibaka puts it back up, blocked by Bynum, and the Lakers win. Now the Lakers had momentum. Game four, the Lakers having a sizable lead. Cephalosha is watching Kobe. Oh, wow. Durant's got 15, Kobe is chiseling and working on the Cephalosha. The synergy was back, the mojo was back. This Lakers team could not be stopped. Game for the Lakers. Kobe fighting through Westbrook. Get a hoop, get it right to five. Westbrook guarding Bryant. Good! In his fourth quarter, where the Lakers led by as much as 13 points, the Thunder would stave off and make a huge comeback attempt. Westbrook with the N1. Bryant. Oh, what a shot! It was a six point game, down to a four point game. Kevin Durant with the ball, ties it up at 96. And now the Lakers had to respond. Kobe misses, tie game. Who's gonna win this one? Russell Westbrook comes back. Uh-uh, but Kendrick Perkins is there. Kobe Bryant tied the game on a couple of free throws. Russell Westbrook turns it over. The Lakers with the ball, but Gasol turns it over. Kevin Durant with the ball, holds it off for the last shot. Okay. This is for the lead. Kevin Durant, the NBA's leading scorer. As much as 13 points up against the Thunder, the Lakers could not stave off the comeback attempt by the Thunder. And the Thunder now with a 3 1 lead over the series. Stretches the last two minutes. That's when the Thunder has been at their best. And now the Thunder can win the series at home. The Lakers are up by two. 30 points for Kobe Bryant. But you just knew Kobe had to leave it all out there for them to even have a chance. However, offensive rebounds in this game for the Thunder. Westbrook held by Sessions. Oh, he put it down! This play right here was the turning point of this game. They were now rolling. Westbrook again. 42 points. 40 minutes, 33 shots. And now just like that, the Thunder not only beat the Mavs that they lost to the previous year, but the Lakers team that they lost to a year prior to that. This was looking to be the Thunder's year in the playoffs. Welcome to the Western Conference Finals, a heavyweight matchup pairing up a couple of power pack big three. But they would have to face off against the Spurs team that were a proven championship contender. And of course, OKC had a tough one ahead of them. And the San Antonio Spurs have taken game one. This is a clash of titans. Both teams at the top of the Western Conference 
Harden was actually a pivotal factor in the series. Harden, four for five, two points, and that leads to a timeout. He had some spurts in the series that really made you think he could establish himself. Harden, with the runner, bites it home by Ibaka. Harden on the drive. My goodness. It counts oh, and the foul. Three other attempts in which he threw fouls on, so... Harden can't find the shot, went to the step back. Now the runner. But the Spurs, unfortunately, had the game on lock, and it was a 2-0 deficit for the Thunder. But the Thunder came back at home and won game three commendingly, and also came through in game four to tie the series. The last two games mean nothing. We moved on from that two days ago. Our focus is winning game five. Thunder had a lead, but the Spurs closed the gap. Shot clock to five. Martin for three, yes! Clutch, that's all you could say about that shot. James Harden with the cojones to pull up for that dagger. They'll look back at that Harden three-point shot with the clock going down as just one of the greatest shots in the history of this organization. And at this point, the Thunder, having won game five, would go home and win in six games a series and they would be the Western champions. Now in the finals, for the first time in Thunder history, they would face off against the Miami Heat, featuring the big three with LeBron James capturing it. They would win game one, but that's as far as they went. The Thunder losing the next three games in the series, being down 3-1 to the Miami Heat. It didn't look good for the Thunder. Fighting, keep fighting. We cut it down. We cut it down again. Cut it down again. Keep fighting. So we give you an update. LeBron with 15, Wade with 9, Chris Bosh with 10, and the lead is 10. And the Miami Heat, just a better team, blowing out this Thunder in the game five to win the NBA championship. Kevin Durant with a valiant effort and Harden basically non-existent in the series. He was traded to the Rockets that same offseason. We were very transparent with James that uh, if this was not acceptable, then we were going to have to move uh, towards uh, making the best decision for the franchise. Harden was traded not because of the poor play in the finals, but because the funder couldn't afford to pay the repeater tax that would be enforced if they were to give Harden the contract that he demanded. And so he was a rocket. Number six will hang on to it. Puts it down, drives it, scoops it, scores it. Harden, who was having a fantastic debut for the Rockets the following season, made people think the Thunder may have made a mistake. Will the Thunder regret this trade? He backed it up and made a resounding statement that echoed all the way back to my hometown of Oklahoma City. You blew it, Thunder! The Thunder had only so much money to give, and Ibaka was the bigger priority over Harden. And the Rockets now would meet with the Thunder in the playoffs in 2013. And this would be an interesting series as Harden would now play against his former team. Ibaka going to block the shot. He used to go to the front of the rim, pick up that garbage. 42-41 in Westbrook. Hobbling away. Beverly went for the steal just as the timeout was called, and he actually got part of the knee of Russell Westbrook. He is really upset. Westbrook had never missed a game up to this point, and for the first time in his career would have to miss the remaining of the playoffs. Now, the Thunder beating the Houston Rockets in the series would have to face the Grizzlies team that they beat in 2011. But sadly, the Grizzlies had their number this time around. Their starting lineups, Reggie Jackson starting at the point, Russell Westbrook out till after the All-Star break. Jackson has does a nice job as he continues to get better. Reggie Jackson, a point guard that they picked three years prior, now giving an opportunity to play pivotal minutes for the now, Thunder. Jackson dribble hands to Durant, clock at 10. Nice bounce inside. It would have been nice not to get in the hit hand. Durant turns inside and picked up. That's how he's hurt him all second. And Kevin Durant capped off the season with an MVP award that was special. And of course, the playoffs now rolling. The Grizzlies once again being their opponents in the first round. Launches a long three, yes! Would have gotten an easy one. Jackson with the floater. Playoff career high for Reggie Jackson, who has been a problem all night long for the Memphis Grizzlies. In the game where the team couldn't buy a bucket, Reggie Jackson was the pivotal factor. And it's over! The series is tied at two apiece. Going back to Oklahoma City. Reggie Jackson coming up big, finally getting some playoff shine. But it was not at the podium. It was KD and Westbrook at the podium, as it was still KD and Westbrook's team. Westbrook 
on a step back. Played by Green. In another West Finals rematch, the Spurs seem to have the Thunder's number. Duncan working hard to get inside oh. a beautiful move by Mind you, this was the 2014 Spurs and the Thunder were just slightly outmatched by them. To seven. There is Duncan. Trying to go glass. Rebounded by the red, but a foul on Ibaka. The clutch shot making the Thunder were known for just didn't come up in this series. Fires one and that'll do it. The Spurs are headed to the NBA Finals. But now what about Reggie Jackson's role on the team? I remember in Denver earlier in the season, you said starting something you want to do you've been dreaming of since you were younger. I mean, how important is being a starter in the NBA team? Mm -hmm. I like to be a starter, I'm not going to lie. What did the coach have to say about this? Does he also agree? You finished the season more. with Reggie as your starting two guard. He's obviously more of a natural point. I mean, but could you envision yourself going into next season with the Westbrook Jackson backcourt starting? I know with Reggie, he's a very good player. He has the ability to play both positions just like Russell does. So they can play together. That's, you know, that's been proven and during this series. We won the two home games, lost one, obviously an overtime loss last night. We have a lot of basketball to be talked about, a lot of things that needs to be worked on. And then we have a whole month of training camp to who will fight for those positions. There's obviously some positions are available. Very interesting non-answer, but the Thunder would have a complicated season as KD fractured his foot and would need surgery, likely out for weeks. Until now, he has been an Iron Man, missing just six in the last five seasons. Over that time, Kevin Durant has played more games, played more minutes, and scored more points than anybody in the NBA. And now the Thunder would have to start their season without their MVP. It was uh, unexpected, but um, you know, but being going through so much in my life, it was just another bump in the road. I knew I had to get past. So. And now Westbrook would have surgery on his face for a fracture that would leave a dent on the right side of his face. Interestingly enough, the Thunder made some trades at this point. Deion Raiders, not part of this team. Just under 50% for the Thunder to make the postseason in a loaded Western Conference. So here's the paycheck question for you. <laughs> Do the Thunder make the postseason? In a season that was already being wasted by the Thunder, Reggie Jackson's role on this team would be murky with Deion Waiters being on the team now. Scott Brooks hasn't shown me that he knows how to use all those smalls. Reggie Jackson, now Deion Waiters, you got, you got Westbrook. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of firing power, but is it enough defense night in and night out as we can see against yeah. teams like Houston? It's not going to work. James Harden went through all their smalls. The Thunder were in the race with the Pelicans and the Suns for that eighth seed to face against the, the Red Hot Warriors and Deion Waiters was becoming more and more of a fixture on this team, leaving doubt that Reggie Jackson would ever be a starter on this team. They made two separate trades Thursday that gives them four players, Jazz Center, Ennis Canner, and uh, Pistons guard DJ Augustine. In return, the team traded Reggie Jackson to the Pistons and Kendrick Perkins to the Jazz. Jackson wanted to be traded and made it clear Apparently, Jackson's desire to start for the team created tension to the point where Jackson even turned down a giant four-year, $48 million offer. Everybody that wants to be here is here. We're excited about our new guys. It hurts to see uh, Perk leave, but, you know, you know, we, we still gonna remain brothers brothers until, uh, until we're both gone. So, you know, it was uh, definitely a tough day, but it was, it was a good day as well. Reggie seemed happy about the trade based on his tweets, and Westbrook, though, he was not very happy about this. Reggie Jackson tweeting, crying tears of joy right now that he's going to Detroit. I mean, that's just what he wanted. And like I said this morning, man, uh, you can't force anybody to be here if they don't want to be here. Um, Reggie did a great job. That's why he was here and uh, you know he made the best decision for him. And with that rough transition out of the way, Reggie Jackson was now a starting point guard for a team that desperately needed one. Yeah, oh yeah. Plenty of O from that man, Reggie Jackson. Now Reggie gets to be the starting point guard with a team with Andre Drummond, a team whose defense has looked pretty good to start the season. Many have thought about the next meeting Reggie Jackson would have against his former team, and Westbrook didn't think much of it. Anticipation about Reggie's return to OKC, how do you think I'll handle him tonight? Who? Reggie Jackson. Oh, uh, what happened? There was a lot of anticipation about his return to Oklahoma City. How do you think y'all handled him? from media, various uh, people. Nobody in this locker room, we wasn't worried. We just came out and competed, maybe from y'all, but just another player, another team. In Jackson's first return to OKC, 
Westbrook was nowhere to be seen. It was KD leading the way to a convincing win against the Pistons. But the underside, the Pistons were trying to make the playoffs in this 2016 season. And with Reggie Jackson, they were looking pretty good. Reggie Jackson in one game having 30 plus points and 15 plus assists against the Suns. Wow. First Piston with 30 plus points and 15 plus assists since January of 88. The greatest Piston, Isaiah Thomas did it. The Pistons under Stan Van Gundy would have to make moves to get better. Um, around the margins, Brendan Jennings and Erlia Sova got traded for Tobias Harris's big contract. And now the Morris Twins also playing against each other in this matchup with Tobias Harris making his debut against the Wizards team. Wow, Reggie Jackson got crossed up there. But the Wizards would win against the Pistons team that was set to face off against Westbrook this time in OKC. Drives right through the defense, the two-handed slam. Reggie getting the better of Westbrook, celebrating at home. Westbrook being visibly frustrated after the game, didn't make much of it, but you could clearly see on the court that Westbrook was visibly mad. And obviously, Reggie Jackson's Pistons, the eighth seed in the East, they were on track to make the playoffs and, and play against the LeBron James-led Cavs. The stretch, it was all Cleveland, and the Cavaliers take game one. This was the Pistons' first playoff appearance under Stan Van Gundy, and in this 2016 first round series, they were the eighth seed. So you didn't really expect much here, and the Cavs definitely had their way against this Pistons team. Welcome back to game three from the Palace of Auburn Hills, a capacity crowd. The first game at home in the playoffs since 2009. The Pistons, well, they're ready. And you can tell, pre-game situation, the, the crowd, they have been on smoke still in the building. <laughs> Irving to James, out to Smith, takes the three, one dribble, puts it in. Delavadova finds Irving for three. Oh, he puts it in. As if things can get worse for the Pistons, they're now down 0-3 in the series against the Cavs team that was hungry to get back to the finals. Reggie Jackson on him, almost lost it. A fade away from three, no, not there. Ball's on the floor, Stanley Johnson's got it. Pivotal moments here, Reggie Jackson with the ball, and there's a couple of seconds left in the game to tie it up. Let's see here. Two, one, Jackson, the three shot. And there goes the Pistons' hopes to win a series in the playoffs. Trying to conquer this little stage I'm in right now, which is, you know, get this thing right, work as hard as I can, uh, and play the on the court. So, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's tough, but, you know, I just got to be ready to, uh, ready to go. Now, back in 2015 in OKC, yep, they missed the playoffs this season, and Westbrook was not happy about it. Russell Westbrook had 37 points in the Thunder's 138-113 win over the Timberwolves, but it wasn't enough to push the Thunder into the postseason. Doesn't mean nothing. Good job, Ray. I'm at home watching other teams play. Doesn't mean nothing. And this Thunder team, they were pretty bad the last six games, and uh, it cost Scott Brooks his job, actually. He got fired as the head coach. Should he have been fired? Billy Donovan will be the new head coach of the Thunder. I mean, was it his fault that this team just couldn't make the playoffs without Kevin Durant being healthy and obviously Westbrook going through his ailments as well? You know, it's unfair that he got fired. They just screwed him, plain and simple. The guy made it to the finals, been in the conference finals three other times. Well, now it's Billy Donovan's turn to be the head coach and they would face off against the Mavs yet again in the playoffs in 2016. For the fifth time in the last six years, they take out the Mavericks, 118 to 104 and win the series. With both Kevin Durant and Westbrook healthy, this would be the year, right? I mean, this should be the year for them to win it. As the Spurs take a 2-1 lead in this best of seven series. That little scare here from the Spurs didn't matter. The Thunder would win this series in six games, and it was time to face the Warriors. Green putting a move on Adams, and he is fouled. And down goes Adams once again. And the Thunder, they just had their way here. Durant, straight down the lane. He has been unstoppable. The Thunder tied their most points in the game in the playoffs, and it seemed like they got the better of the reigning champion Warriors. Draymond Green is in the house. The Nutcracker is back. Westbrook for three. 
and now the Thunder are up 3-1 against this Warriors team, and they would have to respond. And Godala from Thompson. Yes! Here's Curry. Yes! And that will do it. The series lives on. Clay Thompson's game. That was game yeah. six. Yeah. He was just cashing out everything. Just couldn't miss, bro. It was just amazing. An NBA record. His 10th three-pointer. Don't let the pretty shot fool you. That's hard. Curry from deep. Yes. A three for Steph Curry. Brings to the front court. Here's Curry for three. Yes. Again, it is Iguodala. Thompson fires for three. Yes. Golden State by three. Curry works it down. Five on the 24. Makes a move on Ibaka. Banks it home. In one of the shockers in terms of a come from behind effort. Wow. To tie the series free apiece, Clay Thompson set the playoff record for most three pointers in the game. And not just that, it's a game seven against the Warriors. Curry over the red. Yes. Front court. Curry. The short pot. Yes. The winner advances to the NBA Finals. Thompson for three. Nice move by Curry to the rim. They almost had it. The Thunder almost had it, but the Warriors are now going back to the finals yet again. And he fires. Yes. 26.8 remaining. A 10 point Golden State lead. The Warriors do it by becoming only the 10th team out of 243 to win. Reggie Jackson, he was smirking now on Twitter. <laughs> Funny guy. But Kevin Durant, he's a free agent now. Is he going to leave OKC? He does not want to be Patrick Ewing. He doesn't want to be one of the greats of his era who only plays in one finals and never wins a ring. Here are the odds for the six teams with the best shot of getting Kevin Durant. Interesting. OKC with the highest odds here. The draft will come up and Sam Presti would be making moves yet again. You've got Demonte Sabonis, the 11th pick, along with Victor Oladipo going to Oklahoma City. And how about Sam Presti trading Serge Ibaka to Orlando? And now Serge Ibaka getting traded. Wow, this is a shocker for Sabonis, the recent draft pick, and Victor Oladipo. Interesting stuff here. Now Kevin Durant, he made his decision. Breaking news. Happened. It's here and it's Golden State for Kevin Durant. Wow. Some would say the weakest move a superstar has ever made. Kevin Durant now joining forces with a team that beat him in the playoffs. Wow, this is a shocker here. Kevin Durant now a warrior. It's all kind of part of the business as we know. As Kevin Durant makes himself at home in Golden State, the Pistons have to make moves. Tayshaun Prince about to retire and they had a bad draft. Their selection with the 18th overall pick for Stan Van Gundy, who's the, not only the head coach, but Henry Ellenson is their pick, and this is quite an interesting one. The Pistons now, uh, wow, this is bad. This is really bad. The Pistons not even making the playoffs in 2017, and now playing their last home game in the Palace, their new arena already built. You mentioned Caldwell Pope. The Pistons essentially withdrawing their qualifying offer, making him an unrestricted free agent. They let Caldwell Pope walk and signed Avery Bradley off a of free agency. Quite interesting stuff here from the Pistons front office. Now, Avery Bradley, he would prove himself to be good for the Pistons in the beginning of the season. Look at this. Wow, he locked down Kyrie Irving. We welcome in Adrian Wojnarowski, who broke the story today, the, the tr traditional Woj bomb. It was a big one. But that didn't matter. He would be a key trade piece alongside Tobias Harris and Boban Marjanovic for Blake Griffin. Wow. With Andre Drummond and Blake Griffin, they now have an estimated about $300 million invested into these two players. Griffin, Drummond together. Can it work? I guess the Pistons are trying to mimic the Lob City Clippers of old with Reggie Jackson at point. Obviously, this would, this might work? I don't know. Is this the way you build a basketball team to win in this era right now? The Pistons' strategy here is obviously to fortify the front court so that they can match up against any other front court in the Eastern Conference. But will that matter when your draft picks are just not good enough to pair up with these two? I mean, what the hell are these picks? Because of the job that we, the Pistons have done in the draft by, by passing on Booker, 
in passing on Mitchell. Obviously, with Blake Griffin and the Clippers, it was a nasty divorce. Uh, Blake Griffin clearly uh, not in good terms with the Clippers. Uh, he had some good things to say about this Pistons franchise. It's a, it's a you know, first-class organization. They, they, uh, they're run very, very well. Um, they take care of their players. They do like the little things. They go the extra mile. This was shaping up to be another lost season for the Pistons, uh, mediocre at its finest, losing big to the Cavaliers and being ninth in the East. The season about Blake Griffin was about Stan Van Gundy. Something is not right with this picture. I expected more from the Detroit Pistons. Well, another lost season. Stan Van Gundy got the hook and is doing Casey time. He would be the head coach of this team. And they would actually make the playoffs, but Blake Griffin would be sidelined. The Blake Griffin situation is concerned. Rod Beard tweeting out um, this quote from Griffin. Yet again, the AFC, this time facing off against the number one seed Bucks. Here's that the put me down. To do defensively, that's allowed them to kind of blow this thing open here early on. He is going to be so vital to their success because of that ability right there. And obviously, without Blake Griffin, they had no chance, right? Andre Drummond even got ejected in the third quarter. This was a frustrating loss. Wow. Left knee uh, says the frustration levels at 10, and if it was just my decision, I would have played. I mean, this series was basically lost with Blake Griffin hurt, and the Pistons just did everything they could, but the Bucks were way better. Outside, it was behind him. Giannis down the lane. Scoop, score. Ball game. 120 to 99. Positive news out of Detroit. Blake Griffin would actually play in game three. They're, just, they're playing against a better team, right? Yep. I mean, they really are. They just, this team swept them. None of that mattered, though. The Bucks now leading 3 0 in the series. It was a blowout after blowout. Uh, the Pistons players just couldn't get it done. And Giannis even had a bad game and they still won. Yeah, they had no chance. In this game four here, it was basically Blake over. Blake Griffin with a spectacular finish here and dunk. Look at this, on one leg, he's got a flat tire and he is, he is appreciated by what he has done. You could tell he was playing for that injury and it was it was hard for him and unfortunately it was over. He has that type of mentality, plays hurt, does all the little plays and I'm sure Ben can appreciate what he has seen in Blake these last two balls. Yet another playoff series with the Pistons haven't won a single game. Oh no. Although, um, you know, the organization um, will be different without Kevin, um, the principles, the values, uh, the things that he helped establish as one of the founding fathers of the organization remain intact. Oh yeah, we're back in 2016 now. Westbrook get, getting given a big contract extension. Did the fact that not only Kevin left, but it was to Golden State, did that make it sting even more? Sting for who? You? Uh -huh. The Thunder now, without Kevin Durant having to play the season now, and Westbrook, all heroic, had a historic season. That's one of those records that will never be touched. What Oscar did with the triple-double, that would never happen ever again. A 30-point triple-double. Westbrook had a, a, an MVP season that was unlike many others. We should really be proud of him for the, his accomplishments. Led the Thunder to a six seed playoff berth. Of course, it was one of those MVPs that was controversial. But Westbrook, he did a lot for that team and obviously deserved that award. But it was playoff time. Back at everybody and welcome inside a boisterous, a very loud Toyota Center. As James averaged 20 and a half, seven. There's a steal. Patrick Beverly. Facing off Patrick Beverly. Oh boy, this is going to be nasty. Pat floats it up and in. Westbrook sails inside an offensive foul. <laughs> this game one was a bit chippy, and Patrick Beverly and the Rockets actually getting the better of Westbrook this time around. Passes off to Pat. Pat puts it up and in. Pat Beverly is on fire. Shots here in the third quarter. He also leads the Rockets in rebounding with eight rebounds. He's got two steals. <laughs> Obviously, Harden was the best player on the court, but Beverly actually outplayed Westbrook in this game one. Oh, no. With 37 from Harden. Yeah, this Thunder team just wasn't good enough to win this series. Oh, what a shot of Prinus! 
They're gonna obviously this was a frustrating loss, and Westbrook and Beverly getting chippy post game. And, and, uh, Patrick Beverly, can you talk about you know kind of what happened there? Oh yeah, he was talking about he was first team all defense, but I I I, I didn't know what the hell he was talking about because I had 42 at the time. Um, the series, you know, I don't know what he talking about. Maybe he was dreaming of some shit. I don't know. Interestingly enough, Beverly's response was just as nasty. Pat, congrats on the win. Uh, can you talk, walk <laughs> us through a little bit about um, kind of what did Russell Westbrook say to you during that exchange that got you so you know upset? No, oh, no. Uh, that's actually the first time we uh, we've exchanged words this uh, you know this postseason. But uh, he's a uh, he's a really good player. He uh, applies a lot of pressure just due to his athleticism and his. His creating ability, but now it shocked me because he said he looked up and said, "No, from garbage, you know, I got 40 points." I'm like, "That's nice." It took 34 shots to get it. I mean, no, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to bash anybody, but I mean, you know, men lie, women lie, but the numbers don't. Collectively, as a unit, we've done a great job on them. Uh, we try to make them um, shoot a lot of tough shots, and, and uh, the numbers show. And the OKC Thunder needed reinforcements, and they got it in Paul George from the Indiana Pacers. Reportedly, the Thunder is going to send Victor Oladipo and Domas Sabonis to Indiana. That's a steal. Jo Meanwhile, if you go to New York, there's a disgruntled star in Carmelo Anthony that was about to get traded. Not just that, but they're saying that OKC and Carmelo are circling each other. For the second time in his illustrious career, Carmelo Anthony is on the move. And now Russell Westbrook with his new deal. There's a big free in OKC. Paul George even said the trade to the Thunder was a kick in the behind. And Carmelo wasn't happy about this question. Coming off the bench. And the second question is... Well, me? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, I guess that answers that for me. I, I mean, I don't know where that started, where that came from. <laughs> this would be a lineup that could cause some problems in the Western Conference. Can this Thunder team go all the way and make a playoff push? to the finals. Let's see. The way they look right now, it's bad. For three and a half quarters, they're fitting together just well. But when the clutch time comes, that's when the issues kick in. This Thunder team not exactly built for the clutch moments. Five and 10 in clutch time. They're 22nd in offense and not just that, 23rd in defense. The big free can't shoot a lick in the clutch. Any other team in the NBA. We're seeing too much hero ball. You're not gonna win basketball games that way. And they brought back the same old question. Did the Thunder make a mistake? Right now, their teams are going in opposite directions. The Thunder have won five in a row, and the Rockets have lost three in a row. Will, did the Thunder make a mistake trading Harden and keeping Westbrook? I think if the Thunder were granted a do-over, if Sam Presti was granted a do-over, and in that time frame where he decided, I can't keep all three of these guys, Durant, Westbrook, and Harden, and he chose to send Harden to Houston, if he could have a do-over, he would keep Harden and send Westbrook to Houston. In 2018, they played the Jazz in the first round, and and it was a bit chippy. Actually, not a bit chippy. It was pretty chippy. And Utah, they were looking good. Man, we've got technical fouls everywhere. And they're being led on offense by a rookie that was up for rookie of the year at Donovan Mitchell. And they were actually beating the Thunder at their own game in the playoffs. This was looking like a done deal at this point. Westbrook drives. Missed the layup. George for the tie. Westbrook. Like, go strong, go, you have to go Inside. strong. Adams got it back, he got it back. For the tie, Westbrook! Got Gobert up in the air, didn't get the foul call. Yes, a clear foul on Gobert that wasn't called, but the Thunder were just not good enough to beat this Jazz team in the series. It wasn't meant to be for Russell Westbrook. I don't confront fans, fans confront me. Um, here in Utah, man, a lot of uh, disrespectful, uh, vulgar things are said to the players here. Just a frustrating series as a whole, and where's Paul, Paul go? Yeah, I didn't quite get it. <laughs> Let me say it again, I'm here to stay. Paul George has committed to the Thunder. Uh, he will be back next year. The Paul George has agreed to a four-year, 
137 million dollar max contract. But sadly, they couldn't keep Melo as if they did, they would have to pay an excess of 100 million dollars of tax money. And of course, that means that he gets traded. The Thunder actively looking for trade partners for Carmelo Anthony. Not to mention the fact that his game is regressing as a whole and he's aging, becoming more reliability. And they needed more at the bench position, so they traded Carmelo in the first round pick for Dennis Schroeder. And this will be an interesting move for the Thunder. Where is he on your MVP ladder, Tracy? Does he move up? Two. He's up, on, up to two. He's number two. Paul George was having the best year of his career, putting up numbers on both ends that were quite stellar. But Paul George is my MVP thus far. The odds makers had him both top three in MVP and DPOY. That's incredible. George is averaging almost exactly the same points, rebounds, and assists as Durant did in OKC during the 2015-16 season. Doing this at a similar efficiency than Kevin Durant as well is actually quite stellar. He can steals, deflections, and loose ball recoveries. Despite having to trade Melo, it seems like this was for the better as Paul George elevating his game, being the best player on the court now for the Thunder, what does this mean for them in the playoffs? We know he committed to the team, and now they check out in the first round again. Lillard, long range three, and it's good at the buzzer! The third straight first round exit since KD left, and it's not looking good. What you do, because you're looking at the contract, to answer your question, I think only John Walls is worse. Yeah. 38 next year, 41, 44, 47. And now there was more and more doubts as to whether Westbrook can lead you to a championship as a 1A. The worst, statistically. 104 guys took at least three pull-ups a game. He was number 104. And of course, Kevin Durant, he's won two championships since. OKC still doesn't like him. Harden, he's in Houston. And they're still a good team, but what will happen to OKC and their future as a whole? I know that he had, he had, he had used the term mutual. Um, I, I, you know, I don't. I wouldn't necessarily agree with that because that would infer that we we were wanting to to trade Paul George, which I think most people would agree that that probably wasn't on, on the top of our offseason priority list. Well, Sam Presti didn't want to do it, but he had to pull the trigger anyway. So, what did the Clippers do so right that convinced Kawhi Leonard to sign with them? They traded for Paul George tonight, and they are sending to Oklahoma City. Uh, essentially a record collection of draft picks, four first-round picks, four unprotected future first-round wow. picks, a protected future first-round pick, two pick swaps. And alongside this trade, they also got rookie Shea Gilgis-Alexander and Danilo Gallinari. And outstanding rookie point guard Shea Gilgis-Alexander, Danilo Gallinari for Paul George. And that was essentially the first domino to fall and OKC's path to a new direction. Sam Presti making another move now. Oklahoma City came to terms on an agreement, and this was done almost as soon as this auction started. What's going to be a re rebuilding project is they have all these number one picks now. And now with both trades done in the offseason, the OKC fund their own over eight first round picks over the next six years. This would be interesting. Drafted Kevin Durant, traded Ray Allen to the Celtics, traded Richard Lewis to the Magic, and that, that pick ended up becoming Serge Ibaka. He's been here before. This, in a lot of ways, is maybe where he's most comfortable. And how many titles did they end up with? That's the problem. You talk about Sam Preston, he's made a hell of a lot of good basketball deals. They finished with no titles and even more. Nick Friedle here is a critic of what the Thunder are doing at the moment. Oh, okay, you got a lot of picks. Great. What happens next? The only way I think all of those picks turn into a success is if Sam Presti can do what he has done before in taking all these assets and finding a star, or finding a couple stars down the line. But when I look at those draft picks, I go, eh, okay. Nobody knows what happens with the draft anymore, and throughout the league, you're never sure what's gonna go on, even when you have a boatload of picks. Both sides, I get it. It makes sense to think that Sam Presti could pull off this rebuild knowing that he drafted this many good players in succession right over the years and you would think oh Sam Presti he's gonna get at least one gem here and even if you do everything right if he catches lightning in a bottle once again and drafts future MVPs why are they gonna stay in Oklahoma City Bing. you have an owner who doesn't want to go into the luxury tax you have a small market where you know clearly it doesn't have the creature comforts that some other places do in this league and if you're Sam Presti you're, you have a tough time getting free agents to come there too but if I'm Sam 
Like, I understand he's done a great job and he commands the salary cap, great negotiator. You try to get to a city where you don't have those Ooh. hurdles to deal with. So, I'd be called, well, hopefully, Washington Wizards, you watching this, call up Sam Presti. So even Dave McMenamin thinks Presti should not be in OKC right now. Term. Who is going to choose Oklahoma City and potentially that culture over playing in LA or New York or another big market? That would be my issue now for the Thunder. But hey, they got the picks. They got some stuff in return for those trades. They gave up two picks and two swaps. That's crazy. That is a crazy price for something that I'm going to say on national TV. It ain't going to work. Chris Paul now is a Thunder, okay? And Westbrook is a Rocket. It's going to be interesting, but let's shift the gears back to the Detroit now. I love being here. I love to play the rest of my career. Stay in the course as Unfortunately for Andre Drummond, he would get shipped out of Detroit. If there's one thing I learned about the NBA, there's no friends or loyalty. I have given my heart and soul to the Pistons. And to be having this happen with no heads up makes me realize even more this is just a business. I love you, Detroit. And over in Detroit, they got a new GM here, Troy Weaver, who actually came from the Oklahoma City Thunder that we've extensively covered here. Hired by Preston in 2008, he's widely credited for picking Westbrook in the draft. His philosophy, he says, is we don't draft players, we draft people. He's also widely credited for recruiting Carmelo to Syracuse. One of his best qualities, Sam Presti says, is that he's very convicted. Interesting. With the Drummond move and this hire, they're clearly rebuilding. Feedback. No oh, shot block. Schroeder, we're tied up again. Led by Chris Paul, this Thunder team actually managed to make it to the bubble in the playoffs and competing in the close series against the Rockets. For Chris Paul, a 15-point fourth quarter wow. in this one. And OKC's history in Game 7s, eh, it's not bad. 6-4 and four all time. Chris Paul being the oldest player now in the Game 7 to get a triple-double. Chris Paul, Harden falls, bodies all over. Paul left it short, and Covington clears. Dort for three, blocked by Harden. Dort got it back, tried to throw it off Harden, and missed him. Lucas Paul. Tough scenes here as the OKC Thunder in the nail biter lose to the Rockets in the bubble. Dennis Schroeder would get traded in the offseason for Danny Green and the rights to a 28 overall pick. Who else will be next? Chris Paul is headed to the Phoenix Suns. Uh, he'll go in a multiplayer deal from Oklahoma City. Sam Presti with another huge haul for a player in Chris Paul aging, getting a bunch of players and picks. Now he owns way too many first round picks for me to count. Chris Paul's leadership was key in mentoring guys like Shea and Lou Dort. Now, new head coach comes in, Billy Donovan gets fired. Mark Dagnall from the OKC G League team gets hired. Now, AM Hoops also made a video about what the Pistons should do rebuilding back in 2020. And his strategy is quite interesting, I'll just say that much. With all this cap space, they should not go out and sign like a Brandon Ingram or a Montrez Harrell. They don't want win now players. Instead, they should get bad contracts, which I know sounds ridiculous. Why would you want that? This might be the right strategy for the Pistons, and here's why, okay? They're not a free agency destination for teams, so they're going to have to trade their players and try to rebuild that way. Bruce Brown getting traded to the Brooklyn Nets. The Detroit Pistons select Killian Hayes from Lakeland, Florida. Yeah! And with the seventh pick, Pistons select Killian Hayes. And Weaver, he traded for a bad contract in Ariza to get up in the draft in the 16th pick. Bro, what the heck is going on, Detroit? What, what are you doing, Detroit? Okay, 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 okay. Hey, they're following the strategy, and with that pick, they get... Oh, Weaver goes big. Washington center Isaiah Stewart. He's a fairly traditional big man. Again, the Pistons, they're trying to get young again. They're trying to rebuild, and Weaver is accelerating that by trading their players to get key picks. Clippers traded Landry Shaman to get 19th pick and the Pistons trading Blue Canard to get that pick as well. Now, Tyrese Halliburton was in his draft, but the Pistons didn't care that much. They picked their players and that's about it. What else should the Pistons do? My last trade is Al Horford and three first round picks for Tony Snell. Darren Moore wants to get rid of Al Horford because of his bad contract. And Detroit have a bunch of players that Darren Moore might want. Are the Pistons primed to do this? A clean tear of 
uh, his right Achilles. And Sam Presti seeing a prime opportunity after Clay Thompson is now off for the season, goes and offers up Kelly Oubre. And the Kelly Oubre deal is going to get done. They're finalizing it. He's coming from Oklahoma City. Oubre coming from that Chris Paul Suns trade that Presti did a few days ago, actually. Quite interesting. Daryl Morey's wasted no time putting his fingerprints on the Sixers roster. The new Philly GM traded Al Horford and his big contract along with a 2025 first round pick and a second round pick, 34th overall to the Thunder for Danny Green and Terrace Ferguson. Wait a minute. So the Thunder did what the Pistons should have done and this time using Danny Green from the Schroeder trade to get more picks from the Sixers and Al Horford's back contract to boot? Oh, interesting. Sam Presti got some plans here. Daniel Gallinari, they let him walk. And at this point, Ricky Rubio is going to get traded back to Minnesota. What is Presti cooking here? The funder gave the draft rights of Jaden McDaniels and Ricky Rubio to the Timberwolves, as well as giving the draft rights to quickly to the Knicks to get James Johnson, the draft rights to Paul Kuchevsky, and they traded Steve Adams to get more picks. And they also sent James Johnson, who they got from Minnesota, to Dallas, where they got Trevor Ariza from Detroit and even more picks. <laughs> like three year deal for 60 mil for Jeremy Grant. So Weaver is now signing a free agent in Jeremy Grant. And Sven Presti is the one getting back contracts and dealing them to get more first round picks. Almost like the Pistons should have done that. But the Pistons still have a back contract in Blake Griffin to trade away. Let's see what they can get. Blake Griffin, uh, their GM, Troy Weaver, told me today uh, is. Uh, not going to be in the lineup here moving forward. They're going to look for a trade and certainly buyout discussions. Now, Blake Griffin is on one of the worst, if not the worst contract in the league at this point. His career averages have been plummeting, and Blake Griffin is just not the same player he used to be. He's getting older and more injury prone. Blake Griffin and the Pistons have agreed to a contract buyout. And that's the official concession from the Pistons. They couldn't find a trading partner because of how bad Blake Griffin was falling off. And the Pistons now in the lottery Fortunately for them, get lucky. The number one pick in the 2021 NBA draft goes to the Detroit Pistons. It was a foregone conclusion who they were going to pick at number one. It was only one player. Aid Cunningham with the first overall pick in the NBA draft. Now, Weaver only had one first round pick in this draft being the number one pick, but they had players in the second round like Isaiah Livers, Luca Garza, and more. And this Pistons team now getting younger and getting more talent, more young talent. Okay, see, also doing the same with drafting Josh Giddy at number six. But you know, Presti, he had more first round the picks. The Oklahoma City Thunder select Alperon Shengun. And this Thunder rebuild, hey, they just got another young piece in Alperon Shengun. And it's quite interesting seeing where he's gonna end up, wait, he's gonna get traded? They will be sending this pick to the Rockets. And the Rockets are sending two future first round picks to Oklahoma City. Golly, man. Presti loves his picks, man. He was willing to trade a pick currently for more picks in the future. And he still had four picks this draft. The MVP over there, Sam Preston. He the MVP. I mean, Josh Giddy is great. Sam Preston, I don't understand. This guy's eye for talent. He drafted KD, Russ, Jeff Green, Sergi Baca, Reggie Jackson, Josh Giddy. And the list goes on and on and on. This guy's pretty damn good and i'm not gonna lie to you bad this pistons rebuild's also going smoothly kate cunningham the number one pick that's the big winner right there the big winner and in his rookie season he had a pretty good season albeit he did get hurt and the pistons obviously losing less than 25 wins yet again they have the most cap space in the league the thunder 14th in the west with 24 wins the pistons 14th in the east with 23 wins the oklahoma city thunder Oklahoma City receives this pick from the LA Clippers because of the Paul George trade. Here we go, the lottery, and OKC already has the lottery pick. The fifth pick will be made by the Detroit Pistons. Tough luck for the Pistons, they can get a top four pick, but OKC could, even though they have a 12th pick in the same lottery. What is happening here? Apparently the Thunder are now getting the second pick of the draft, so now they have two lottery picks, and that gives Ray for Chet Holmgren to be picked by the OKC Thunder. Wow. The 11th pick is headed to Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City Thunder select Jalen Williams from Santa Clara University. And the Pistons biting the bullet, trading Jeremy Grant for a 2025 first round pick and more assets to boost. 2022, they have three 
first round picks in this draft. Through 2027, they have 18 first round picks. That's the most in the NBA. The Thunder already had two lottery picks, traded up to get a third lottery pick. Not just that, they also had a second round pick to boot. Quite an interesting draft. They're just two years uh, into this rebuild, and you look now at the talent they gathered. Josh Giddy, their first round pick last year, who had an outstanding rookie season. And then getting Chet Holmgren at number two uh, in this draft, in addition to his Usman Dang, and now Jalen Williams of Santa Clara. Now the Pistons also made some moves, drafted Jaden Ivey with their fifth pick, but also traded up to get another lottery pick here. Jaden Ivey from Purdue University. Uh, <laughs> Let's go! Uh, oh no. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Jalen Duran from the University of Memphis. The pick got traded to the Knicks, then rerouted to the Pistons. He's headed to the Pistons, oh. so that's just in. Uh, he will be headed to the Pistons, according to our Adrian Wojnarowski. Dylan Rose. The Detroit Pistons won the draft. Detroit the Detroit Pistons basketball. won the draft. Not only did Jaden Ivey fall to five, something no one expected, but then Jalen Duran, a Jalen in Detroit, Unfortunately for the Thunder though, Jet Holmgren would get hurt in this little matchup that he played with LeBron playing DeMar DeRozan and whatnot, and he would end up missing the whole season with a foot injury, being the latest top five pick to miss a whole season in his first year. Surgical repair is what will happen, and then it's a lengthy recovery, you know, it can be four to six months to get all the way back from it. And the Pistons, on their end, they're getting Boyan Bogdanovich in the trade for Kelly Oubre and look at their lineup. Let's go. Jalen, playing team, playoff team. What are we looking at? Playoffs? Playoffs? We talking playoffs? Playoffs? Despite losing Chet Holmgren though, the Thunder team had some wins during the season that were quite impressive, which raised the profile of this team as a whole. They became just the third team in the last 25 seasons with five 20 point scorers on their way to scoring 150 points. So Shea Gilgis Alexander had his first all-star season putting up numbers that were quite impressive. Uh, he put up 30 points, shooting 50% from the field and 90% from the line. Hadn't been seen since Curry in 2016 in the MVP season. Shea also being awarded All-NBA First Team and making it to the plane as the 10th seed. The point is that will do it. This overachieving Thunder team. I mean, this is one of the most entertaining teams in the NBA because of how well coached they are, the young talent. The word that comes to mind though to answer your question is poise. They yeah. just never look flustered. They're a relaxed group. And they know that they've got the best offensive player on the floor. Pretty much every night they take the court, Shea Gilgis-Alexander has the ability to be the best player on the floor. With the massive leap he took this season, he also became a finalist for Most Improved alongside Jalen Williams, who became a finalist for Rookie of the Year. I was happy for Shea because he. I, I, I was worried that, you know, we don't show Oklahoma City uh, uh, at all, number one. However, in their next playing game against the Timberwolves to make the playoffs, they lost a big loss. The playoff rocket is now complete. T-Wolves and Nuggets Sunday. With Dwayne Casey stepping down, Monty Williams became the highest paid coach in the NBA now. The Thunder team got better, but the Pistons team didn't. The Troll Reaver even writing a letter to say that he's going to fix this. The Pistons with a worst record in the league and the Thunder with a playing record. Now, the Pistons also got the fifth pick in the draft yet again and picked Osar Thompson, who's good in his own right, but Wemby is right there, man. It's tough. Dallas is picking for Oklahoma City here at number 10. The Mavericks are sending out Davis Bertans' uh, contract and the number 10 pick for Oklahoma City's pick at 12, at $22 million left. Sam Presti clearly wanted to go after Casey Wallace and didn't want to risk losing him out in the draft. My pick is really one year and one player away. This okay. is premature. This team could not contend for a title this season with a trade. But just oh, keep just your eye on the up. Oklahoma City Thunder. <laughs> yeah. They have a ton yeah. of young talent. I like it. They're getting Chet like Holmgren it. back as presumably their starting center and their front line is kind of... Now Kevin Porter Jr. will get traded to the Thunder. Sam Presti only doing this to get two future second round picks because of course he is. And I'm just not going to say a word about this guy. Oh. And the C play, watch it. A little drop coverage, stays with the ball. The Thunder would actually make quite a statement to begin the season. Uh, getting to the second seed early in the season. Wow. 
The Pistons' losing streak has now reached 15. That is a franchise single season record. Anytime we run up against some adversity to start the game, you can just see the countenance, the spirit of the team start to diminish. We got to fight. We got to hang in there. And uh, we got to get that, that feeling we had the first week of the season. We got to get that back because that's the standard. 16th consecutive loss for Detroit. Knicks have beat them 13 straight. The frustrating streak continues for the Pistons. And it looked like the Pistons were going to snap this losing streak, but it lives on. 18 in a row. And that will do it. On the other side, the Thunder looked legit. They're legit title contenders. Oklahoma City is the best story in the NBA right now. And what they have done to develop this young group, uh, they went into a rebuild and got out of it pretty fast. Chet Holmgren is the rookie of the year. I mean, when you look at their numbers, it's relatively comparable. You know what's not comparable? How many wins Oklahoma City has compared to San Antonio? Oh, yeah. The rookie of the year discussions were heating up, and Chet Holmgren was leading the pack for rookie of the year, and Shea was playing even better. The two seconds left to make it 131 to 123. That's 21 consecutive defeats. A point, opponent, opponent. <laughs> Man, maybe it is time to call it a night. <laughs> Pull them off, and this one is official will prove to be a bit of a silver lining for the Pistons. The 117 they've given up is a, is a better dip. 9.7 oh, left. No. Oh, boy, here we go. Sell the team, they're saying. The unknown comic. No. Yeah, remember him? <laughs> and again, the funder somehow got even better. These brothers can ball. These brothers can ball, y'all. He is doing such an excellent job. I want to look on national television and apologize to that man for any questions I've had about how exceptional he is as an executive. I'm dead serious. I don't apologize often. Yeah, I, But Sam Presti, on national television, I'm going to say this. I, Stephen A. Smith, owe this man an apology. Can't say the same for Weaver and the Pistons. There was somebody that was worse named the Detroit Pistons who had lost 28 straight. How many? So we have to not panic. Don't ruin the, the ship, the boat here. It's, it's pretty good. Pretty good? This is bad. I feel bad for the Pistons fans. The losing streak. Reaches 27 consecutive games. Over the last 49 games, they are 4 and 45. 4 and 45. It wasn't relief. It was just like, thank God, you know, finally. This team, hard to believe that they're even a championship team 20 years ago, but this Pistons team has gone through a lot, and more players are getting traded this time around before the deadline, and they got more players coming in uh, to try to fix this, rectify the situation with Fontecchio coming in, Troy Brown, Shake Milton. Zach Levine was rumored to be traded to Detroit, but he got hurt, and so the trade never went through. And the Pistons traded Alec Burks and Bogdanovich to get more pieces younger, and Killian Hayes, the seventh pick, got waived, unfortunately. And so now this Pistons team is a bit revamped, a bit new. Incredible uh, for how young uh, you know, most of the guys are. The Thunder did a trade as well, trading uh, David Bertans contract to get Gordon Hayward. And now we're in the present day, and this just goes to show the contrast of two rebuilds, both in which started basically at the same time, but we're seeing one bare fruit in the most beautiful ways imaginable. And we're seeing another one really just plummet to where now they're essentially having to do this thing all over again for another three years or so. And it's funny because one GM in Presti was more aggressive in the rebuild, actually trading up for bad contracts and amassing as many stockpiles of picks that he could. Weaver, on the other hand, was not as aggressive, not just that, but also tried signing free agents like Jeremy Grant and also trading away some of the bad contracts for very little value. So the Pistons now are at this position where they don't have the stockpile of assets that the Thunder have, even though the Thunder are way better now. And now the Pistons are stuck whilst the Thunder are thriving. This has been a tale of two NBA rebuilds. Thank you all for watching.